Hello friends, let us now hear some important points about the differences between alveolar and interstitial disease. So if you see, this is the normal lung. Actually, inside the normal lung, we have alveoli. Alveoli are nothing but the air spaces. Surrounding the alveoli, we have interstitial disease. So, number one, we have alveoli. If the alveoli are diseased, that is if there is water, pus or anything accumulated in the alveoli, then this results in alveolar disease. Similarly, if there is anything in the interstitium, this results in interstitial disease. Now, if you see, what is alveoli? Alveolar disease. Alveolar disease is, so first, what is alveolar disease? When do you call that there is an alveolar disease? In alveolar disease, if the alveolar air, in alveolar air spaces, if these are filled with some abnormal material, like if they are filled with pus or if they are filled with blood, water, proteins. So, if the alveoli are filled with blood, or pus, water, proteins, or cell debris, then we call it as alveolar disease. Then when do you call that there is an interstitial disease? We call that there is an interstitial disease if the interstitium is the area around the alveoli. Around the alveoli, this area is called as interstitium. This is nothing but the supporting tissues of the lung par parenchyma. If this has disease, if this supporting tissues have disease, then we call it as interstitial disease. Some diseases may involve mainly alveoli or mainly interstitium. Or some may involve both alveoli and interstitium equally. So, based on it, we can... We have both alveolar disease and also the interstitial disease. So, what actually happens is whenever there is an insult, that is there is an allergic reaction or there is anything, some insult. Whenever there is insult, one thing that happens is the alveolar walls are lined by thin layer of cells. Now, these alveolar walls are capillaries. Uh, they become leaky. So, these are alveolar walls and then in, we also have capillaries. So, these are capillaries. Now, there will be injury to the endothelium. Here in between we have basement membrane and we have uh, uh, the squamous cells of the alveoli. The alveoli are lined by squamous cells, number one. Okay, capillaries are also lined by endothelium. Here we will have endothelium. And in between both of them, we have some amount of connective tissue. So, whenever there is some injury, this becomes leaky. That means there will be loss of tissues of squamous cells or endothelium or in between. So, during that time, the edema, so the fluid from the capillaries, it goes into the alveoli. And the alveoli are accumulated with the fluid. Okay, now the alveoli are accumulated with the fluid. So, slowly as the injury progresses, uh, there will be even the necrosis will start and fibrin will occur and there will be formation of fibrosis also. Okay, slowly the alveolar spaces and also the interstitial tissues, both these will also become thickened. So that is one thing. So first, whenever there is an insult, any type of injury, this will result to leakiness of industry of uh, uh, capillaries and the lining, cellular lining, capillaries and alveolar lining. Both these will become uh, leaky. So because of this edema or water, this will accumulate in alveoli. Now, as the disease progresses or as injury progresses, this edema will become into an extensive necrosis. And slowly, 
these extensive necrosis will result in production of fibrin leading to fibrotic stars and thickening of air spaces is seen so next on the chest x ray what is the differences between an interstitial disease versus alveolar disease so on chest x ray you will see that an alveolar disease we will have fluffy and blobby changes are seen and they are ill defined the changes can be colliding or merging and they are seen either in a segment or lobe and sometimes air bronchogram is seen in alveolar changes whereas in interstitial changes we see presence of nodules nodules are something like this you will see linear or reticular opacities are also seen there can be linear or reticular opacities with septal lines may be seen there can be reticular with some nodules are seen that is reticular nodular and these interstitial changes are also associated with reduced lung volume and honeycombing pattern is also seen in the interstitial changes so if you see the x ray changes so this x ray shows the alveolar disease that is if you see here we have this is actually a homogeneous pattern is seen okay this is actually a homogeneous pattern is seen in the uh, upper lobe right upper lobe so this is seen in right upper lobe pneumonia okay next next if you see here this is interstitial disease where the interstitium this is these are the alveoli so surrounding the alveoli the interstitium are affected here instead of alveoli it is the interstitium which are affected here so in the interstitial disease you will see presence of reticular pattern so this is almost presence of reticular pattern is seen these are actually fibrotic and thickened interstitium is seen here so this is interstitial disease okay now then if you see the next step okay see sometimes these may be confused with bronchovascular marking because even bronchovascular markings look the same so how are you going to differentiate between interstitial shadowing or interstitial fibrosis and all these changes which are seen how are you going to differentiate between this interstitial shadowing with bronchovascular markings so there is one way first there are two rules whenever you see a prominent bronchovascular markings then one thing you have to look is you have to look at the costophrenic angles so if you see first and foremost once you have seen the bronchovascular markings you have seen markings here now you see the costophrenic angles first in the costophrenic angles if they are clear number 1 then that's okay if they are not clear then that means there is obviously there is lower low pathology is present okay that is number 1 okay next next the number 2 is always see the continuity of the vessels whether the vessels are continuous or not and mostly the external two third the external one third this part will be clear if it is not clear then definitely there is pathology because the bronchovascular markings will be rarely seen in the periphery they are mostly in the central part now if you see here these are actually the bronchovascular markings okay even here you will see the bronchovascular markings next sometimes evaluating chest x ray is really really difficult so if you see this is the pneumonia it is showing an alveolar pattern and it is actually fluffy shadowing is seen here okay this is pneumonia with fluffy shadowing and here if you see 
here you will see presence of reticular these are reticular markings and you are going to see these are nodules these small small nodules are seen reticular nodular pattern is seen here suggestive of interstitial disease then if you see here here if you see here you will see that this is not alveolar not interstitial it is almost in the middle similarly this is neither alveolar nor interstitial it is almost seen in the middle okay not actually alveolar not actually interstitial also but the disease process is there in the chest x-ray next what are the differential diagnosis this is important for dominant alveolar or airspace pattern dominant alveolar or airspace pattern or pneumonia type of disease is present in the following in adults we have pulmonary edema cardiac or non cardiac pulmonary edema lobar pneumonia hemorrhage lymphoma bronchoalveolar cell carcinoma adult respiratory distress syndrome aspiration pneumonia and in infants there is hyaline membrane disease and transient tachypnea of newborn all these are associate as all these are differential diagnosis of dominant alveolar or airspace pattern then second type dominant interstitial pattern dominant interstitial pattern is seen in pulmonary edema pneumonia that can be viral or pneumocystis carinae pneumonia tuberculosis sarcoidosis idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis rheumatoid lungs scleroderma lymphangitis carcinomatosa and crack smoking so these are the differential diagnosis of alveolar and interstitial pattern now you see here this is the picture showing the alveolar pulmonary edema you are seeing lots of fluffy homogeneous opacities are seen with even patchy opacities these are seen starting from thyroid region so this is seen in alveolar pulmonary edema next here if you see this is in the interstitium you can see this this has an alveoli this is one more alveoli one more alveoli and in between the alveoli you can see this pattern so this is reticular pattern and it is actually and due to interstitial pulmonary edema then this is also an alveolar pattern and it is an alveolar pulmonary edema which is seen okay all these are alveolar pulmonary edema next this is again an interstitial pattern where you can see the fibrotic strands are seen patchy opacities are seen with fibrotic strands and even if you observe carefully here the diaphragm is also a little pulled up see like this diaphragmatic tenting can be seen all these are interstitial pattern changes which are seen in the patients so this is about the differences between alveolar and interstitial disease thank you